Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, what's to up, the, family? Yes, the Varian Leadership Conference 2023. 2023, it is finally here. Yes. We've been waiting all year for this conference to come around. And in fact, right now, we, I, I believe we are looking mm -hmm. at our uh, Narthex, where guests and pastors and leaders from around the country mm -hmm. are getting ready. See, they're taking pictures of the screen, getting their yes. schedule Scanning ready. It. They are ready to yes. go, yes. ready to see what all we have in store here for this amazing Korean conference. Yes, yes, yes. So exciting. I, my name is Jasmine Harris. And I am Pastor George. Yes. And we are so delighted that you decided to join us yes. on this, uh, what, Wednesday evening? Wednesday evening. Wednesday evening. First evening. night of the 2023 Brian Conference. I'm so excited. Absolutely. Yes, so welcome to Brian 23, powered by Community of New Direction and Logos Bible app. Yes, preachers. Preachers, if you don't have the Logos Bible app, turn your preacher card in, turn your minister card in. Oh. You need to turn it in right, right now because it has thousands, and I mean thousands, of resources mm -hmm. to help make you a better preacher, mm -hmm. a better theologian, a better pastor. And so that is certainly something that you need to get right now. I mean, yes. right, right now. Yes. Like, Stop right what now. you're doing right now. And, and download the app. Yes, uh, yes. Because it's vital to you becoming uh, uh, one of the most educated preachers that you can be. So Logos is an amazing um, app and program. And we want to thank them for sponsoring. Yes. Um, being one of our pivotal sponsors mm -hmm. here at the Rian Yes, so exciting. We also, today is our first night, our kickoff, um, and we are having Dr. Carolyn Ann Knight tonight. Dr. Knight, yes. Yes. Powerful preacher, yes. powerful professor, mm. woman of God who has trained pastors all across this country. Um, at, I would believe it's the um, Interdenominational Theological Center in Atlanta, wow. Georgia. Wow. And so every year she is pouring into the lives of young men young mm -hmm. women preachers, uh, preparing them to be the best pastors that they can possibly be. We have uh, a, an amazing slate of leaders and pastors and preachers that are going to speak um, throughout the course of the Korean Conference. Now tonight, again, we have Dr. Carla Knight, but if you check the schedule on the website or on the app, uh, we have some amazing stuff for not only pastors, but we have stuff for first ladies, mm -hmm. for lay leaders. Yes. Uh, we have some amazing stuff. Yes, so if you are a leader in whatever ministry it is, um, in your church, or just you want to be a leader in the community, this is the conference for you. We want you to be here. We want you to join in. Um, and then if you are not a leader and you just want to come and hear a good word, every single night we have great speakers and preachers that are coming before us and um, giving us and sharing with us um, some good news. So make sure that you are joining in. And if you can't make it in person. You can always watch online. Yeah. Listen, like you're doing now. Grab your plate now. Yeah. Grab your plate. Grab your juice. Grab your biscuits. Yes. Do your Uber Eats. Do it right now. Do it now. now. You have time. Because you don't have to leave the yes. house. You yes. don't have to leave the <laughs> living room or the computer, wherever it is that you are. Yes. Sit down and not only get a feast on the word, but you can feast and eat some chicken and some fruit punch what so, you, you can have a good you can have fruit. a good you can have or you can get chipotle house. you can get, get chipotle get too some, i mean that's that's no. fine the last time i had chipotle it almost killed me Absolutely. okay well but we are so some excited grape juice some crackers have communion we had communion earlier you yes can, we did you can do it at the house yes but listen we're actually getting ready to get in mm -hmm, service i believe mm -hmm. bishop is in the pulpit so yes, let's get is. ready to go into our berean service <laughs> You're glad for what God has already done? Give God total praise. Don't let anything distract or disrupt or disturb. Give God your best praise. 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 I'll wait. Your best praise. 
your best friend. How good our God is. I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I'm just waiting on your best friend. Your best friend. Like you're glad you made it 10 months into 2023. You're glad to be in the house of the Lord October the 4th. I'm waiting on your best friend. 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 How good our God is. And he's worthy to be praised. If we had 10,000 lifetimes, we could not praise God enough. You may have your seats for just a few minutes in the presence of our great and glorious God. I need to express how very grateful I am to be in the house of the Lord one more time. But most especially, I'm glad and grateful to be in this particular house where my friend and my brother the presiding prelate of the Berean Fellowship of Churches is the senior pastor, the premier preacher, the angel of this house, my friend, my brother, Bishop Timothy J. Clark. And I know I won't be the only one who says this this week, but since it is my turn to say it, let me say what he has meant to me, to my life, to my ministry these many, many years. I didn't know all of that. I didn't know he knew me in New York City. I thought our narrative began in Columbus, Ohio. I didn't, I didn't know it went back all those years when I was young, but now I'm old. I didn't know our history went back all those ways, but I know that since I've known him, and every time I've seen him, he has been a representative, an outstanding, a stellar representative of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's been a friend to me. He's been a brother that I need. And he has always been there. And I thank God. We, 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 uh, I know it brought me to tears when he called me to extend this invitation. And the invitation uh, ran into an extended conversation that had me in tears and messed up for the rest of the day. I went into the gym. People asked me what was wrong. I said, nothing's wrong. Uh, I just got through talking to somebody. And, 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 and Bishop, they thought I had been out in the car praying. They thought I'd been talking to God. But I said, no, it wasn't that high up. <laughs> but it was a good conversation. I love him. He has been a brother to me. And I know that he has led this organization and this church with integrity, intellect, and inspiration. To the Pressburg Tree, to the Board of Directors, to this praise team, to the officers and lay leaders of this very fine church, to all of the pastors and pulpiteers and preachers who are part of the Berean Fellowship of Churches, to all of you who are assembled here tonight, to all of you who walk by faith, my brothers and sisters in Christ and in creation, ladies and gentlemen, it is good to be here. For this is another time that God has blessed us 
to be in the land of the dying on our way to the land of the living. And we thank and praise God for God's goodness unto us. Now, they didn't give me a timetable, but I'm not going to hold you too long. I want to turn your attention to a very uh, familiar passage of Scripture, the continuing acts of Jesus Christ, according to the apostles. Acts, the first chapter. And I want to read in your hearing verses 1 through 11. I'm grateful for the presence of so many people that I know and love. I'm not going to call their name, but Scott Cumberbatch, my friend on many, many years, uh, and I'm glad to see him on the instrument. He was uh, with me, or I was with him in Jersey a couple of months ago, and I posted something on Facebook, and I got suspended from Facebook. I, uh, I posted, I said, the next time I'm in New Jersey and Scott Cumberbatch is at the instrument, I'm going to kidnap him and take him back to Atlanta with me. <laughs> next thing I know, Facebook suspended me <laughs> for 30 days. And you know me, I, I shot right back at them. I said, Facebook doesn't understand black people. They certainly don't understand the black church. What do you think happened? 30 more days. <laughs> so now all I post on Facebook is scripture. <laughs> the first chapter of Acts. Verses 1 through 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. They then gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel. He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. People of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. How we bless and praise and magnify and honor your holy and wonderful name tonight. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for bringing us to the house of prayer and praise and power and purpose, oh God, where we've already felt your presence moving in this place. God, we thank you for this fellowship, the fellowship of the Brian Fellowship of Churches. God, we thank you for those who make up the leadership of this great organization. We thank you, oh God, for all this 
organization means to the body of Christ and to the people of God worldwide. God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, uh, our blood brought brother who died on Calvary's red cross, uh, took away the pain, the punishment, and the penalty of sin uh, so that we might be in right relationship with you, free to praise you as we are, free to worship you as we are, free to give you the glory that only you deserve. God, we thank you for the total and complete uh, and awesome sufficiency of your Holy Spirit uh, that is right now moving in all of us, uh, allowing us to feel what we feel and to know what we know and to have what we have uh, and to receive what we receive. And God, since it is not predicated uh, on anything that we say or do or think or feel, uh, save somebody tonight. Uh, heal somebody tonight. Uh, deliver somebody tonight. Uh, set somebody free tonight. Uh, open a door for somebody tonight. Uh, make a way for somebody tonight. Uh, answer a question for somebody tonight. Uh, resolve a dilemma for somebody tonight. Uh, open a door, oh God. Step into somebody's space uh, tonight. God, we pray right now uh, that you meet a need for somebody uh, tonight. God, because you are God and there's no God like you nowhere, do it tonight. Uh, God, we pray right now that while we're sitting here in worship, oh God, you will meet a need on the outside of worship, oh God. Because we've had faith to come to church on Wednesday night, oh God, won't you meet a need back home, oh God, or, or at a school or at a church, oh God. You know what we stand in need of, God. You know what we set aside to be in worship tonight, oh, oh God, and so we release it to you. Just have your way tonight. God, do in your preacher that which I need you to do. Stand in my body, think through my thoughts, uh, and speak through my mouth. God, if I'm too high, bring me down. If I'm too low, lift me. If I'm too far away, bring me in. Give me what I need to preach with power in this place. God, stand in front of me uh, so they do not see me, but they see you uh, preaching through me. Consecrate these lips of clay. Uh, pour the oil on me. Uh, that ran down from Aaron's head, oh God, upon me tonight. God, let me preach in spite of me to preach your gospel. want to declare in the presence of angels and all these people that I love you and I thank you for making me a preacher. Now, God, won't you use me in spite of me to preach your gospel? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the summer of 1978, Warren Beatty starred in a Hollywood released movie entitled Heaven Can Wait. The movie storyline was about a quarterback, Joe Pendleton, for the Los Angeles Rams, who was prematurely called to heaven after a tragic traffic accident. When he arrived at the entrance of the gate of heaven, they checked the record and the archangel, Mr. Jordan, discovered that he had indeed arrived in error. Apparently, mistakes happen in Hollywood's version of heaven. He discovered that Pendleton actually had about 50 more years to live. He then offered to return his body to earth only to find out that he had been cremated. On the verge of playing in the Super Bowl, the now disembodied quarterback demands uh, to be returned to earth and fit with a pro football player's body. As the movie goes on, Pendleton is indeed returned to earth, but in the process of returning to the team, he discovers a renewed purpose for living, falls in love with an environmentalist activist, and lives a more meaningful and purposeful life for the remainder of his days. And by the time that is allotted to me in this worship service tonight, I want to borrow that title from the movie and tag this sermon with the title, Heaven Can Wait. Heaven 
can wait. We now know because we have the sacred text before us that Jesus has come to the end of his post-resurrection ministry. Jesus has now come to the end of his time on earth. His departure is now at hand. After the resurrection, we know from the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Luke that Jesus made two initial post-resurrection appearances. But in the opening verses of Acts, we understand that Jesus made several extended appearances uh, with the disciples. Uh, in other words, after the resurrection, uh, he hung out with them, talked with them, uh, and broke bread with them. Jesus appeared and stayed with the disciples and in the community for 40 days talking and teaching about that which they already knew, the kingdom of God. The significance of 40 days is well known in both the Jewish and Christian community. Moses spent 40 days on Mount Sinai. Elijah spent 40 days on Mount Horeb at the beginning of his earthly ministry, Jesus spent 40 days uh, in the wilderness. Annually, the church uh, observes a Lenten season, a period of 40 days between Ash Wednesday and Good Friday to spend sacred time to uh, draw, draw closer and nearer to the presence of God. It is a season where we can become aware of God's presence uh, and discover what God uh, would have us to do. These 40 days after the resurrection must have been an exciting time for the disciples uh, that followed Jesus. They were given another opportunity to spend quality time in the presence of the one that they had walked with uh, and watched for three years. Considering what had gone on before, those terrible last days before the crucifixion of Jesus had been terrible for the disciples as well. Some of the disciples could not bear to watch. Still others lacked the courage to hang around as their leader underwent the sham of a trial, endured the mockery and ridicule of the soldiers, and died the agonizing death by crucifixion. When Jesus breathed his last breath, it seemed as if the cause to which the disciples uh, had given their lives during the preceding three years uh, died as well. But then came that early morning, a few days later, when the word began to spread among the women first, uh, and then the disciples at the tomb uh, was empty, and some people were saying uh, that Jesus was alive uh, because he had appeared to his disciples. Uh, and now we have come to that uh, which will be God's final affirmation uh, and confirmation uh, of Jesus Christ, uh, the ascension event. Uh, on one of the occasions when Jesus was greeting, meeting, and eating uh, with the disciples, telling them again about the kingdom of God, uh, Jesus gave them these final instructions. Uh, Do not leave Jerusalem, uh, but wait for the gift that God has promised you, uh, which you heard me talk about. Uh, for John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized uh, with the Holy Spirit. And as always, the disciples uh, had uh, some questions. Uh, Lord, are you at this time going to restore uh, the kingdom to Israel? Now, this is a reasonable question. After all, Jesus had been talking about uh, the kingdom of God. The disciples in the Jewish community lived under Roman governance, uh, subject to the rules, regulations, uh, and laws of empire. Their entire history had been predicated uh, upon the messianic reign of the Messiah who was to come and liberate and emancipate them from Roman rules. As a risen Lord, surely uh, Jesus could fulfill the messianic expectation uh, of restoring Israel uh, to the spiritual and political sovereignty uh, that it once held. 
system. Now, without denying a future restoration uh, along these lines, uh, Jesus tells them uh, that they are not privy uh, to God's timetable. Agendas, times, and dates uh, are in God's hands. Uh, this is all they needed to know uh, for now. Uh, they would receive power uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Uh, and with this power, they will be transformed uh, from passive spectators uh, awaiting the fulfillment of their nationalistic hopes, uh, dreams, and aspirations uh, to act witnesses uh, for Jesus uh, on a global scale uh, beyond their familiar geo and political uh, boundaries. Uh, and then in the next instance, without warning or announcement, uh, Jesus is engulfed in a cloud uh, obscured from their view of the disciples and taken uh, into heaven. Now for our modern day scientific uh, analytical minds uh, who find the direction of the ascension uh, incredulous, uh, do not get hung up. Uh, on direction. Uh, remember the disciples lived in a world uh, far more primitive uh, than the one we inhabit today. They lived in the time uh, of the three-storied uh, universe. Uh, heaven was up. Hell was down. They lived on earth. The point of the ascension that you need to remember is not is that the one uh, whose birth was signaled by a star, uh, announced by the heavenly host, uh, whose baptism was noted by the voice from heaven, uh, now receives uh, God's final uh, sign of approval. Uh, Jesus now sits uh, at the right hand of God. Uh, the ascension of Jesus uh, is not about direction. Uh, that is Jesus going up. Uh, rather, it is about the fact uh, that Jesus is returning to God uh, from whom he had come in his birth at Bethlehem. Uh, Jesus has now uh, come full circle. Uh, he was in the form of God, uh, but he gave up his godness uh, in order to become a human being. Uh, to live life as a servant uh, among humanity uh, and now God uh, has exalted him uh, and given him the name uh, that is above every name uh, that at the name of Jesus uh, every knee shall bow uh, and every tongue confess uh, that he is Lord uh, to the glory of God the Father. But wait. There's more. The significance of the ascension was not just what it meant to Jesus. It also meant something to the disciples as well. The ascension of Jesus allows the disciples to see how the plan of God works together with the power and purpose of God. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit uh, comes upon you. These disciples were experiencing many firsts uh, in their lifetime. Uh, everything they'd seen Jesus do, they'd never seen before. And now here is another. Without warning or announcement, no heads up, no goodbye, no see you later, no peace. Uh, just like that, Jesus vanishes from their sight. They thought they would have Jesus around for a little while longer. Right? They thought Jesus would be around 50, 60, 70, yeah, 100 more days. Uh, what they had just witnessed was so dramatic and dynamic uh, that they were frozen in their steps uh, with their heads turned back. Uh, with their eyes watching God. Uh, they were so gazing and so fixed on the heaven uh, that they did not notice two men uh, in white apparel uh, standing right next to them. Uh, they must have been startled when one of the two began to speak. Uh, People of Galilee, they said, uh, 
Why do you stand here looking up into the sky? Yeah, this same Jesus uh, who has been taken from you into heaven uh, will come back in the same way. Yeah, you see him going into heaven. Uh, the words of these two men in white robes uh, serve as a gentle uh, but firm rebuke. Uh, now, we know that angelic messengers showed up in Scripture uh, to redirect and rebuke the disciples uh, of Jesus. Uh, whenever there was a misunderstanding, a mistake uh, of the Word of God, a misinterpretation, uh, angels showed up. Uh, to redirect the people of God. Uh, the disciples often received divine assistance uh, when they misunderstood the meaning and the message uh, of Jesus. Uh, these two men, uh, these two messengers uh, were not denying the reality of Jesus uh, with all of its glory, uh, nor the return of Jesus to take us there one day. In a sense, uh, they were saying uh, to the disciples uh, and to us, uh, heaven is great, but not right now. In a sense, they were saying uh, heaven can wait. There's a better way to invest your time uh, and your resources. Uh, the disciples of Jesus uh, have now been given the responsibility uh, of continuing uh, the ministry of Jesus. Uh, they are the eyes, the ears, the feet, the hands, uh, and the heart of Jesus uh, here on earth. Uh, if they fail in their assignment, uh, there is uh, no other plan. Uh, the period of transition uh, is both exciting uh, and scary. Uh, they initiate a new beginning in the aftermath uh, of tragedy and trauma. Uh, these disciples have undergone a whirlwind uh, of events uh, from the crucifixion of their leader to their experiences with him uh, as a resurrected Lord. Uh, and now they await a new phase of relating to him, uh, not in body, uh, but through the Holy Spirit. Uh, and people of God, uh, I don't know how you feel about it, uh, but from where I sit, stand tonight, uh, from June uh, 2015, uh, continuing through the days uh, of September of October 2023, uh, with no end in sight, uh, we find ourselves uh, transitioned uh, into a world uh, of conflict, uh, crisis, uh, and chaos. Uh, the world we live in uh, has become complicated, uh, complex, uh, and confused. Uh, we are surrounded everywhere we turn uh, by an epidemic, uh, endemic, uh, pandemic, uh, racial and, and, and sexual trafficking, uh, gender violence, uh, gender injustice, uh, inequitable disparities uh, in economics uh, and health care, uh, tumultuous political events, uh, escalating tension uh, between the U.S. Uh, and Russia uh, over the sovereignty of Ukraine, uh, escalating tensions uh, between China and the U.S. Uh, about Taiwan, uh, women in Iran uh, killed, uh, not for being properly in-dressed, uh, but for wearing the proper dress uh, too tightly. Uh, millions of the world's children uh, tried to survive uh, on what we pay uh, for a can of soda. Uh, unsteady political leadership, uh, gyrating inflation. Uh, the seam of these yet to be United States uh, is ripped uh, seemingly far beyond repair. Uh, for far too many, uh, the American dream uh, is still uh, a night wet for mayor. Uh, our quality of life uh, is at stake. Uh, we struggle to hold uh, what is left of our democracy uh, 
together. Uh, heaven can wait. Uh, everybody talking about heaven uh, wants to go there. Uh, many of us want to go to heaven, uh, but everybody talking about heaven uh, ain't going there. Uh, heaven uh, can wait for reasons. Heaven can wait. And then I'm going to take my seat. Heaven can wait because there is so much work to do right here on earth. Look around. The world is so messed up right now that we don't come to our senses and find some common ground a way to heal the wounds in our humanity. Things are going to go from bad to worse. Read or watch the news. Talk of fighting in our city streets. Uh, rumors of civil war. I refuse to believe. Uh, I refuse to accept uh, that the world we now have uh, is the world uh, God wants us to have. Uh, I believe that the way things are uh, are not the way uh, things are supposed to be. Uh, fighting over who's uh, to be the speaker of the house. Uh, children separated from parents, uh, abandoned at the border. Uh, families separated, uh, loaded on planes, uh, deposited in strange uh, cities. Uh, the cities are overrunning uh, with immigrants. Uh, women losing the right uh, to decide what to happens uh, with their bodies. Uh, even in extreme situations, uh, politicians uh, fighting with other politicians uh, and their constituents uh, instead of working together uh, through negotiation uh, and compromise. Uh, domestic terrorists uh, running through the U.S. Capitol uh, with the vice president inside, uh, assaulting and killing uh, police officers. Uh, police officers shot uh, in the streets. Uh, African Americans uh, shot in their cars, uh, in their homes, uh, in the streets, uh, in the sanctuary, uh, in the club. Uh, Evangelical preachers uh, warring with progressive preachers. Uh, suburban parents uh, fighting with urban parents. Uh, blue states uh, fighting with red states. Uh, heaven can wait uh, because God uh, is not through uh, with his work uh, here on earth. I know how bad it looks right now. I know how bad things are right now. But God kept me alive and sent me here to tell you that God is going to have the final say. God is going to have the last word. Don't you doubt it. I truly believe, uh, my hope and my faith makes me believe uh, that the plan and the purpose of God uh, for this world is going uh, to prevail. Uh, I don't know when. I'm not on that committee. I'm not on the date and time committee. That's an executive committee decision. But I do believe I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Uh, heaven can wait for this planet to come to its senses. Heaven can wait, not just nationally and globally, but heaven can wait for us to get ourselves together. Don't go silent now. I will say it because it needs to be said. What has been revealed in these cacophonous days is one of the biggest problems in the church and in this nation is mixed messaging from the pulpit that God loves only certain folks. Jesus died for them, but not for you. Our way of interpreting scripture is the only way. There's no such thing 
as social justice. We don't want to hear anything about critical race theory. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, uh, we are all precious in his sight. We sing it, but do we need mean it? These scattered once gathered disciples have been through a traumatic time. After the death of Jesus, these 120 men and women have returned to business as usual. Fishing, dressmaking, tax collecting, whatever else they were doing before they left to follow Jesus. Now in this moment, here they are together again. And the Bible says that they devoted themselves to prayer. Fulfilling leadership positions. And waiting on the Holy Spirit. Look at Peter. Lying. Cussing. Fighting Peter. Taking the lead. Using his influence. To impact this group of disciples. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Wait a minute. I think I'm talking to all of us. Tonight. God is waiting on us. To get it together. To stop shaking in our shoes, to stop procrastinating, to stop putting things off, to stop playing follow the leader, to stop waiting for someone to open the door or make a way or give you permission or grant you access or give you a seat. God is waiting on you to use what you have and make it available in such a way that it will impact and influence uh, the city where you live and this nation of which you are a part. What you have may not mean much, but Danny Bell Hall reminds us that little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. God is waiting on you. Heaven can wait. What could be more important than going to heaven where Jesus and God and some of our precious loved ones now reside? What could be more better than going to heaven where our finite and limited description tells us there are pearly gates, streets of gold, and milk and honey? What could be better than going to heaven where every day is howdy howdy? And there are no more goodbyes. What could be better than knowing the time and date when the kingdom of God is to be restored? Here it is. Verse 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. What kind of power? The same power that raised Jesus Christ uh, from the dead uh, is now available uh, to you. Uh, you shall be my witnesses uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, that's at home. Uh, in Judea, uh, that's at school, uh, on the job. Uh, at the gym, uh, at the grocery store, uh, at the bank, uh, at the mall, uh, in Samaria. Uh, that's the persons you don't know, uh, don't look like you, uh, or act like you, uh, or talk like you. Uh, and to the ends uh, of the earth, uh, that's when you're on vacation, uh, or on a business trip, uh, or riding in your car, uh, you will have power, uh, everything that we need to be the church was given to us by the head of the church. We have power to save our families, to restore our communities, uh, to empower our men and women. Uh, we have power to heal this nation. Uh, we have power uh, to make sure uh, that persons who are doing so much damage uh, are never, ever, ever uh, 
I mean ever uh, given the opportunity uh, to do it again. We're not members of the time setting committee. We're not assigned to the date committee. This is our assignment. We're on the preparation committee. We're on the witnessing committee. We are to prepare people to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. This committee is not just for bishops or preachers or deacons. You don't have to know a whole lot of Bible. You don't have to have the Bible memorized. Uh, you don't have to be able to quote scripture uh, like you tell time. Uh, you don't have to have a whole lot of money. Yeah, you don't have to dress a certain way or drive a certain vehicle. Just tell the whole truth about what Jesus Christ uh, has done for your soul. Uh, just tell uh, somebody uh, what Jesus Christ uh, has done for you. Uh, tell somebody, uh, anybody, uh, how he picked you up, uh, turned you around, uh, Place your feet uh, on solid ground. Uh, just tell somebody uh, he healed you. Uh, he blessed you. Uh, he delivered you. Uh, just tell your testimony truthfully and honestly. Uh, be a witness uh, wherever you are. Uh, raise your right hand uh, and say, I will tell the truth, uh, the whole truth, uh, and nothing but the truth. Uh, I'm a witness. Uh, I was there. Uh, I was in the room uh, when it happened. Uh, it happened uh, to me. Heaven can wait. I'm done. I know it is audaciously presumptuous to talk about suspending heavenly activity. And the truth of the matter is, heaven comes for someone every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day. So I'm not sitting, suggesting, as we sit here in this sanctuary that we use our time thinking about heaven. I'm suggesting tonight that we get busy about the serious work that is before us. I am suggesting tonight that we get serious about the crucial times in which we live. If we ever needed the church before, we sure do need it now. And because I'm preaching tonight at the Berean Fellowship of Churches, and I know who my audience is, a congregation of intelligent Bible-reading people, you already know the last move in this little sermon. Heaven can wait, but heaven can't wait forever. The songwriter says, years and time have come and gone since I first heard the news how Jesus would come again someday. Jesus is coming someday. And then back then, it seems so real. I can hardly help but feel how much closer his coming is today. Signs of the time are everywhere. There's a brand new feeling in there. Keep your eyes upon the sky. Not gazing, but looking up. Lift up your heads. Redemption. Draw it now. Now, Bishop, Bishop, in his introduction, got a little bit into the sermon, and he told you what happened when he got the call. But I want to say heaven 
can wait because it waited for me. Let me tell you the official report. On September the 1st, 2021, this is what the official report said. At 11.05 a.m., I collapsed on the racquetball court at L.A. Fitness in Kennesaw, Georgia. I had no pulse and was not breathing on my own. A young man named Darnell S. Morgan immediately started CPR with the assistance of other persons in the gym. At 11.12 a.m., the AED, the Automated External Defibrillator, said shock advised. The paramedics arrived at 11.20 a.m. and continued to work on me until I arrived at the emergency room at 12.05. Right before they called it, right before they pronounced me dead. They usually call it at 30 minutes. They shocked me one more time and my heart rhythm was normal again. I am told uh, that I had no heartbeat and was not breathing on my own for one hour. Now, here's the good news. No stroke, no heart attack, no broken bones from the CPR, no surgery, no brain damage, 100% uh, use uh, of my limbs uh, back in the pulpit uh, on the second Sunday of October, back in the gym, uh, November the 8th, uh, back on the racquetball court, uh, December the 10th, uh, back in spin class, uh, 11, uh, 10 out of 11 uh, cardiologists uh, and one primary care physician uh, said this uh, is a miracle. Uh, you know, doctors are not supposed to talk uh, like that. Uh, they're supposed to look at uh, the data. Uh, they're supposed to look uh, at the facts. Uh, all of the cardiologists uh, said that if it were not for Darnell uh, S. Morgan, uh, I wouldn't be here. Uh, now, that's the official report. Uh, that's the uh, report uh, that you can pull up uh, and read. Uh, the same thing that happened to da Damar Hamlin uh, and Bronny James. Uh, that's what's happened uh, to me. Uh, but the uh, unofficial report. Uh, is what happened uh, when it began to trend uh, through social media uh, that I had died. Uh, persons uh, in Atlanta uh, and Houston uh, and Memphis uh, and Columbus uh, and Dallas uh, and Newark uh, and Philadelphia uh, and Oakland uh, and Jacksonville uh, began to pray uh, and they kept on praying uh, and they kept on praying uh, and they kept on praying uh, and from Wednesday uh, to Friday uh, there was a pulling uh, on earth uh, and a tugging uh, in heaven, uh, a pulling uh, on earth uh, and a tugging uh, on heaven, uh, a pulling uh, on earth uh, and a tugging uh, in heaven uh, and about 3.06 uh, p.m. Uh, Friday afternoon, uh, God said, uh, I'll wait uh, but I'll see you later. God took his hands off of me. He said, I'll wait, uh, but I will uh, see you later. I'll wait. Uh, she's got some more preaching to do, uh, some more teaching to do. Uh, she's got some more serving to give. Uh, she's got some more life to live. Uh, God said, I'll wait. Uh, 
remember, I'll see you later. I'm so glad heaven waited. I'm so glad heaven waited. I'm so glad I've got another chance to preach this gospel. I'm so glad I have another opportunity to say yes. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Uh, the Bible tells me so. Uh, yes, Jesus loves me. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He really does. He loves me. I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got some intelligent friends. Some of my friends are PhDs and all kinds of disease, de degrees. Every now and then, we sit around and wax eloquently about what we're going to say to Jesus when we see him face to face. My theologian friends say they're going to talk to him about liberation theology and about the God of the oppressed. My, my, my biblical friends say they're going to ask him about why the Bible is skewed in a certain way that it oppresses black people. My economic friends say, why, God, was there so much poverty in a world of plenty? My womanist friends say they're going to ask them, why were women mistreated and oppressed even in the church? Then they look at me. And they say, Carolyn, when you get to heaven and you see Jesus face to face, what are you going to say? Amen. I've learned to live holy. I've learned to live right. I've learned how to suffer because if I suffer, I'll see eternal life. And when I see Jesus, amen. When I see the man who died for me, amen. All my heartache, all my trouble, all my persecution, it will be over when I see Jesus. Get there. 
But Jesus reminds me, I'll be here when you get there. When I see Jesus. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, heaven can wait because you have work to do. Mm. Mama. 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 I wonder, is there any one in this room, preacher, business owner, school teacher, you work in some other field, and you realize and recognize tonight after this preaching that the only reason you're still here is because God has something else for you to do. And sometimes you want to throw in the towel and Sometimes you get real eschatological and you get homesick for heaven. But the preacher told us tonight heaven will wait on you. Because maybe God wants you to go to heaven with somebody else rather than by yourself. It'd be pretty sad for you to go to heaven all by yourself and nobody there because of you. What a word tonight. What a word tonight. What a word tonight. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed and every heart is praying. Mm. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for your preaching. Thank you that when she fell on that floor, that while there was a tugging towards heaven, there was a pulling on earth. And thank you that after watching so many around this country and in other lands pulling on earth, Thank you that you released your tug and let her come back this way. Thank you for raising her up. Thank you for no visible marks of the incident on her life. Thank you for the clarity of her thought and her speech. Thank you for the unction that's yet on our life. In fact, God, it may be, if anything, the anointing is deeper. And for that, we give you thanks. Tonight, we pray, having heard her story, that you would help us to not be so heavenly minded, we're no earthly good. But let us be up and about our Father's business. There are souls to be saved. There are hungry mouths to be fed. There are sick bodies that need to be tended and mended. There are homes that are disturbed and need peace. There are lives that are being battered on the craggy rocks of a tempestuous ocean. And God, sometimes you're waiting on us to throw out the lifeline, bring somebody to shore. Lord, whatever our hands find to do, would you help us to do it? Forgive us, as the preacher said, for being so indifferent, incredulous. Set us back on fire. Reignite our passion. Give us energy 
enthusiasm and excitement. Send us back on the field. Send us back in the game. Help us to give not just our best, but give our all. We thank you tonight that whether in the pulpit or in the public school system, whether in the suburbs or whether in the hood, wherever we are, help us to let our light shine. Help us to be a witness for the Lord. Tell somebody what he's done for us. We thank you for it tonight. Father, we declare, we decree, our lives will never be the same after this preaching tonight. This sermon will not just take root in us, it will live in us. And whenever we get lethargic, we'll hear the preacher tell us, heaven can wait. Whenever we get disgusted and want to throw in the towel and want to walk away from the assignment, let us hear Carolyn and Knight tell us, heaven can wait. It'll be there. Streets of gold aren't going anywhere. The gates of pearl, the walls of jasper, they're solid, they're steady. They'll be there. Angels will be there. Jesus will be there. Our family, they'll wait on us. We must be up and about our Father's business. Thank you. Whenever we get tired, when we hear the preacher's voice, heaven can wait. We thank you for it. Because we know there's coming a day when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that's going to be. We'll get to sing and shout the victory. Until then, let us be faithful. Until then, let us be studious. Until then, let us be diligent. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Wonderfully sweet but still strong name of Jesus. Now every heart said amen. Love Jesus. Singing oh, how I Come on. Oh, how I tell me why, tell me.